NVIDIA shares hitting a record here this morning, surging over 15%, adding more than $200 billion to its market cap. Now, this coming after the company's earnings results blew past the street's expectations. The move here this morning and also the rally that we're seeing more broadly across the spectrum, showing that the AI-fueled rally still has more room to run, at least for now. Let's talk about what it could mean as we take a look at the longer term. For that, we want to bring in Jeff Bierman. He's Theotrade, a chief market technician. Jeff, it's good to have you here. So there's been so much talk about the fact that a lot of the market gains that we have seen over the last 15 months or so has been driven by the hype and excitement surrounding AI. Does this pose a potential risk here to the broader market to you? Well, first things first, Sean, I want to clarify. It's not hype. It's the real <laughs> deal. AI has arrived. OK, the earnings from NVIDIA are absolutely spectacular. You can comb through it and look for any negativity, but there really isn't. And they did guide higher for the next quarter. However, the question comes down to this. It's not about hype. It's about how far forward have AI stocks priced cash flow and earnings and valuations. Is it six months? Is it one year? Is it two years? I don't have a handle on it yet. I'll let the market sort it out. But I can tell you this, we are at overbought levels that I've never seen. And overbought is a condition. It is not a trigger, which means you automatically turn and sell. Overbought can persist, but it is a warning that the market is getting a little bit beyond FOMO here. And there's a concentration risk factor, meaning that most managers are just throwing away every stock they can to get into this AI revolution and they're missing bargains all over the place in other sectors. So the concentration risk to me is the biggest risk, but AI is real. So the concentration risk is a huge risk. We've been talking about that now for some time. So when you, I guess break that down a little bit more for us, because those who have been calling it for it now for the last several months that they have bought in, they're actually doing pretty well. So why is it now when you take a look at these valuations here outside of NVIDIA, are you raising or really bringing more attention to the fact that this could pose a larger risk to the broader market? Well, it calls into question traditional risk management and traditional investment management diversification. Diversification in this market is dead. It does not work. You can't tell me you're gonna lay risk and spread it across 11 sectors and get a meaningful effective return. It's not working. So what managers have done is they're just gravitating towards what's working and selling weakness to buy strength. So the market itself, if you just segregate just financials and just tech, it's about 60 to 65% of the entire market. Now, financials look fully priced, and they've been disconnected completely from interest rates. Interest rates are going higher, financials are going higher. That, that argument is passed. You can bury that. Nobody cares right now about interest rates for the time being. So whether they're cut or raising, it's not an issue because the earnings on tech sort of supersede and put that to rest. But if the market gets fully priced in tech, and fully priced in financials at the same time, and I believe we're there with financials, then it poses a risk when there's an unwind for a corrective period, because it'll be like yelling fire in a crowded theater, Shauna. Jeff, what are the technicals that you would look to to determine whether or not, and, and the point at which NVIDIA is finally over its skis, perhaps? Well, I like to look at things on a one and two year basis, Brad, just standard deviation channels, two and three. I like to see how far they can test beyond statistical measures, whether it's standard deviation or average to range. But truly, the RSI, not on a daily, not on a weekly, but on a monthly, is starting to approach that 75 to 80 level. In fact, it hit nearly 98 on SMCI on a daily basis just a couple of days ago, which is an all-time high record for an overbought stock. So once you get into these crowded trades, Brad, you can hang out for a while, but if they decide to push the button and exit, it often creates air pockets, dislocations, and gaps. And sometimes those gaps can be bought. And if they're bought and there's no bounce, it can feed on itself. And if the algos can pick off on this, the algos that run it up vertical can also take it down into a waterfall effect. So to me, you can't time it perfectly, 
But if the warnings are there and they're there, you need to scale back on your concentration of your holdings. Jeff, is this across the board? Because you, saw, you said earlier, it's not about hype. Yes, that's true when it comes to NVIDIA, but you look at a lot of those other stocks out there that have really been riding the coattails of NVIDIA. They haven't proven the fact that it's really going to return revenue when it comes to those business models. So when you take a look, are you separating NVIDIA from some of uh, the performance that we've seen elsewhere within the sector? Yeah, I have one, I have separated them in two, Shauna. I call them the high octanes and the low octanes. So for instance, the lower octanes would be Microsoft. Lower octane would be Alphabet. High octane would be something like a Palo Alto Networks or a CrowdStrike or a NVIDIA or an SMCI. So yes, I separate them. And what you're finding is, believe it or not, the Microsofts and the Alphabets are actually not as overbought as you would think they are, nor are they as overpriced as you would think they are. It's really in the high octane, sort of high profile stocks that are at the forefront, the vanguard of the AI revolution, that's driving the market a little bit crazier than it should be. But I wanna make myself clear, AI is here to stay. We're in the beginning stages of this, but let's not get over our skis because let's look back 25 years ago towards the internet age when everybody was buying everything going up and there were only few survivors. I think there are gonna be more survivors here, but I think there are gonna be disappointments along the way for sure. Thank goodness I snowboard, Jeff. Thanks so much for taking the time here with <laughs> yeah. us today. Jeff Bierman, who is the Theo Trade Chief Market Technician. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Sean. I'll see you later.